Planet Water Podcast. Welcome, everybody. I'm very excited to have you. We missed a week, and I'm so sorry about that because I was slightly busy. Uh, I don't want to even say I was slightly busy because I had to drink a lot of water. I was slightly busy because my wife told me, Martin, you're working too much. I take you, I hijack you right now, and we are going together to Northern California and taking four or five days like just vacation. So I'm back, I survived, and I'm so happy to be here back on our great podcast, A Water With. And obviously, I want to say hello to Michael Masha, my co-host in Texas. Michael, how are you? Hello, Martin. How are you? We missed you, of course, but I think taking a vacation is important. And I think it's really cool. We're visiting one of my favorite countries. I have not been, and I understand you have been to Romania already, so I envy you for that. It's a place I always wanted to visit, and hopefully we can have an opportunity soon to get to visit, you know, some of the many, many sources in, in Romania. But in the meantime, I'm also... Um, very proud of uh, the movies you know it's unrelated but romania makes in my opinion some of the best movies worldwide now and i'm following them for the last 20 years and very excited to go to romania you get a very good point there michael uh, romania is an incredible amazing country i was there for several years ago um to shoot a water commercial actually for aqua Carpatica, what i think is a great water too from romania but I love the culture, I love the cuisine, I love the people, I love the countryside, I love the cities. It's such an incredible and beautiful country. A lot of people don't know like, okay, oh, Romania, you don't even have this on your radar, but it's an incredible, sophisticated culture, especially when it comes to food. And I really, really enjoy Romania. I'm a big fan of Romania, and here in America, everybody thinks Romania, Romania, wait a minute, there was something about Transylvania, I think, and then maybe Graf or Duca Dracula. So everybody knows that about Romania. It's like, oh my God, yeah, it's Count Dracula. But I think there's more to discover, obviously, than Count Dracula in Romania. And that's the reason we want to talk today about this incredible, amazing water, and it's called Aura Water from Romania. And hello to Romania, because obviously we have somebody from Romania with us. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, and thank you very much for this opportunity, Martin. No, it's so great, Amalia, that you're with us. So, Amalia, tell me a little bit about yourself. So, who are you, where are you located in Romania, and what are you doing for Aura? For sure, I think uh, from me and Dracula are like 300 kilometers, so it's safe it's super safe i am in timisoara actually is a city in the western of romania and it's 100 kilometer away from the source where we put in the bottle aura water so uh, i am here and i am super glad to meet you both and to talk about romania and the beautiful uh, country and the waters that are spectacular in romania great i think so too because when I was in Romania, I had several other waters too from Romania, and I'm very, very a big fan of especially the Eastern European waters. I love the different TDS levels. There's so much diversity from very low to very, very high, obviously very municipal waters. And this is for me always fascinating when I'm going to a country, tasting obviously the different waters and then discover the beauty of the culture and the country through water. Michael. You told me as well, you're a big fan of Romania. Which Romanian waters did you have so far? Um, you know, living in Vienna, living in Austria, you are much closer than what we can get here in, in, in the US here. But I think it's a it's really very deep and wide culture. As you mentioned about the food, it's very sophisticated and people care about the water. You know, it's, it's very different than in many other places. So I wanted to ask Amalia, is this a new source? Is this a water that was discovered recently or is it a water that has been around for a while or a long while? So what is the, the kind of the history of discovering the source and then you guys started bottling it? So the source is there, I think, from thousand years. Uh, we discovered the source like six or seven years ago, but it was already there. Uh, it came through the mountains 
and uh, the people drink the water, I think, for always. And uh, it was a very nice story because the owners of the company, uh, they, they do business in the electrical and energy field. Some years ago, they have a proposal to buy a company, a water company. It was very expensive and they think, okay, this is not for us, but maybe a business with waters is something very good. So they started to look about the source and uh, they get to Okna de Fier, this village where is the source Uswania and uh, where we make Aura. So they discovered this source and uh, they do the analysis and they uh, get to the idea that this is a very, very special water. It's naturally alkaline, it has inside gold and silver colloids also naturally. So it was the sign that there is a good potential for a water company. So this was the, the, the idea how we uh, get to the, the source. So I think it's always interesting because a lot of people thinking, okay, you're finding a water source and then you're becoming right away a multimillionaire because everybody thinks when you own water, I, right away you're like a, a oil magnet. Huh? And I think that is something what a lot of people don't understand that the bottled water industry is a tough one. Let's say it like that. It's very, very hard to get in there. Uh, there are big corporations who pretty much own the field of bottled water and especially in America, they're selling you then nothing else than filtered tap water where they make millions and millions and millions of dollars of that. For me as a water sommelier, obviously the biggest scam on planet Earth to selling you a filtered tap water in a plastic bottle. That's just mind blowing for me that people are thinking that is the right thing to do. Um, so when, when the owners found that water, what was the next step? Obviously a lot of like comes into the bottle shape into the, 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 the logo, the, um, the name of the water, everything like this. But was the first thing what you guys did was like, okay, we want to sell in Romania or was this right away like an idea of that is a water from Romania, but we want to sell it internationally. So what was the first steps? So the first idea was this water is very good. So what are we doing? We put it in plastic, so it will be a normal water in plastic, or we put it in glass, and this will be something else, because you know the glass is the uh, perfect recipient for, for be beverage, for water, and it pre preserves the, the taste very, very good. So this was the first idea. It was not so simple because you know in Romania we don't have a glass bottles producer anymore. So we buy it, the bottles we buy from, from outside Romania. So it is not so easy and not, not so cheap. As you to already told, it is a tough business. And uh, this, this was very risky for, for us to, to do this kind of water in glass. But it's very challenging, you know, and uh, people like you, uh, it's, it's wonderful when they discover the water and they taste it and they like it. And for us, it's excellent. The way yeah. it should be, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, really, it's really, as you know, Martin was saying, it's, it's really a very tough business. And what it's really all about is, of course, the water. You know, it has to be a, a, a really good water. It has to be a water that has character, right? And especially if you want to put it in, in glass bottles, you want to make sure that when you sell it and even sell it international, there's something there. Just putting water in a glass bottle doesn't work anymore. There needs to be a water there that is worthwhile of being bottled in a glass bottle, which is expensive, and then shipped around the world. So. We totally agree with that. I think it's the water needs to have character. And I found it really interesting and wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about that is a big part of your story is gold and silver. So it looks like your area over there was an area where people were, you know, probably looking for gold and silver for a long time. And 
somehow there's a little bit of the, the gold and silver in, in the water. How did you discover this? Was this clear immediately or did you look at the first water analysis and said, oh my God, there's gold in here. How, how did this gold and aura and the gold and silver come to be part of your brand? So in the ancient times, in that area in Oknadafir, in Dognecha Mountains, uh, it was a story about Romans. They came to look for gold. In Romania, it's not, uh, not uh, so any normal because a lot of Romans came here looking for gold. And in this area, it was, uh, it was in the ancient time, the story about the, the Dacians and after the Romans, uh, they drill about the gold. So it was a golden area. So when we discovered the source, we were thinking, okay, if there is gold, maybe we have also in the water. And this, this was the, the uh, reason that we find it and uh, we, uh, made analysis, of course, in the lab, uh, not in any kind of lab because not, uh, it's not a usual uh, anal analysis. So we made in, in an institute in Cluj, also in Romania, and we made this kind of analysis and uh, we think, okay, this is very special because in the world, not so many waters has inside gold and silver naturally. Speaking, because there are a lot of waters, they uh, came with something uh, after uh, when they bottle. No, this is a natural water. If you drink it from the source, you drink also the same in the bottle. It's not any difference. We have only some particles, uh, filters, not anything else. So this is uh, why the, the water is so good and had character, of course, because it's naturally. Correct, and this is like what I think Michael and myself are the big fans of. I'm well, not even thinking, I know for a fact actually that we are a big fan of. And I think that is a, the big thing here, the next big thing in the water industry in general, that people will understand, wait a minute, where's actually my water coming from? And people want to know more and more about the source these days then maybe they wouldn't think about it for five years ago. And in Europe, it's always a slightly different thing. In Europe, it's more like, yeah, it's, it's clearly my water is called so-and-so or so-and-so, and it's mostly called after actually the region or after the spring source. So everybody knows already right away where the water is coming from. Here in America, on the other side, they have made up names, a lot of water companies. You have no clue where actually the water is coming from, and then you're not even thinking about it. You're just thinking about the function of a water. Americans love to have a function to a water. That needs to be super hydrating or super alkaline or something like that. But like to say, no, my water comes from a natural occurring source and it will not cure cancer because a lot of people obviously love this idea of finding the fountain of youth. And I would love to find it too, trust me. Michael would love to find it, but I think we will never find it. Um, even we had already over a thousand different mineral waters <laughs> drinking. Um, I think the idea is like a real water should come from a natural occurring source. And your water does that and that is exactly what I want to see as a water sommelier. I want to have the taste of the source uh, in my bottle. Nothing should be altered. It should be the originally amazing taste of that particular source in a bottle. And you mentioned it already, right Amelia? Glass is just the perfect container for it because glass will not give or release anything. So it's kind of like protected from the environment in a glass bottle. So I'm a big fan of glass bottles. I completely understand that some water companies doing plastic for convenience reasons. I totally understand. But when it comes to me, my heart obviously is for glass and I think glass is the best container. Um, do you know, Amelia, what is the total the soft solid, so the TDS on this water? Around 400. Okay, so we're talking about a good medium TDS level, so that's very interesting. And you have a still and a sparkling version? Yes, what 
you have there is the sparkling one because it has the black cap and uh, it's natural but not so natural to say like this from from natural water the steel one we put co2 also natural and uh, it is the sparkling version very good for my taste and a lot of consumers are very excited about this uh, sparkling water but the natural one is the steel one with the gold cap this okay is yeah. Did, I, and, yeah. oh, Did yeah. I understand this right? Sorry to, to break you there, because that's interesting for me, because you're saying twice the word natural. So your source is a still source, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And how are you adding natural CO2 to yeah. it? Because you're saying, are you pulling this somewhere out as well, out of the ground, the CO2 level? No, we uh, buy the CO2 from a very... Uh, known international company who is doing this. They are extracting the CO2 uh, somewhere in Europe, in Slo Slovenia, I think, and uh, they put it in the batteries and uh, we, uh, we have it uh, in our uh, company, Nokna de Fier, and we mix the water with CO2. And uh, we have analyzes the purity is 99.99 for the CO2. So we are super sure that everything is perfect. Actually, we have three uh, system uh, to survey the water to be perfect from, from the source in the bottle. We have the SGS for food safety and we have to ISO, this is a European standard, for also quality and uh, food system, safety food system. So this is the idea we want to, to have perfection in the company and everything to be uh, exceptionally for this water, nothing to disturb her from the source in the bottle. Actually from the source and uh, the, the place where we put it in, in, in the... Um, uh, in the glass we have 47 meters so it's not not stress it's a it's a perfect water i, I just learned something michael give me one sec and i wanted to go back to you michael because i just learned something and i never heard that and it's for me fascinating what you're doing so that you're using a still source and then you're buying the co2 from a natural co2 like source and you're pulling that over that's for me fascinating because let's face it there's a lot of other water companies what they would do they would artificially just putting the co2 to it so that's for me incredible that you took that step the extra step and that let's face it that is an extra step what cost you for sure a lot of money as well to do that to say no i our product has to be a natural product so we want to have everything from nature I love this. Michael, did you heard anything about this? That's for me mind blowing right now. Yeah, it, I think it's a little bit confusing and you see this on, on many bottles that you see an um, artificially, and this is artificial carbonate, carbonation added water. And they say natural carbonation added. And if you really think about really deeply about things, you know, if you have CO2, CO2 is natural by itself, right? It's not an artificial element that we created CO2 is as we know all around us. So this confusion is maybe about the CO2 and what, what we really see here is the difference between a naturally carbonated water where the CO2 has been together with the water for a long time and we both you know, talked about this and the, uh, the added carbonation, the artificially carbonation where you use natural CO2 to add it to, to the water. But I think the distinction between the natural CO2 and CO2 is a little bit, you know, hyperficial because if CO2 is just CO2, there's no difference between a natural and, uh, and an artificial CO2. But what I would be interested in is, so you're dissolving gold and silver into the water. And as we know, you know, Gold is a metal and it's, it's not very hard, but it usually, you know, if you have a gold watch and you swim in the pool, your gold watch is still has the same weight after you swim in the pool, so the water doesn't resolve 
your your gold from from your gold watch because that wouldn't be a good thing. So I'm curious, do you have any analysis? Do you know how long, how old is your water? How long is the water in touch with the rock formation, with the geology in order to absorb the small minute amounts of, of gold? Do you have any idea? I don't know how, how much time uh, the water is in contact with the gold. But what I know, we made a study and uh, the, the, I don't know to say, the rocks are in, in a way put it in the mountains, the nature, uh, millions of years ago, something like this. And when the water came, it's very slowly going in, in, in the mountains and they wash very slowly uh, these rocks with gold and silver. And this is the idea how the water is uh, enriched with these two metals, but in molecule discussing because it's colloid, it's not, a lot of people are asking, okay, where is the, the, the gold? Where is the, the uh, flick of gold? There is not, it is in the molecule. And uh, this is the, the beauty of aura, you know, we don't put it there. It was an idea. Let's let's put some some uh, how uh, the champagne is like this. We we don't want this. Is aura is naturally it's good. End of story. I love this, and I think we should start to drink now, aura, because I'm getting very excited, and Michael now is very excited as well. But Michael, I think because we're always saying in our uh, fine water academy classes um, and then all our water tasting you should start with a still water and then enhance to the sparkling but wine is sometimes different because it's very interesting when you're drinking wine you're thinking oh you start with a glass of champagne so it's bubbly and then you're going to the still wine and then you're going from white to red by water i would highly suggest because water has not so many flavor aspect obviously than wine I would highly expect always start with still waters in different TDS levels and then start with sparkling in different TDS levels because when you're coming from a sparkling going to a still, it's pretty tough all the time. So Michael should start with the taste of the still water and then I will join you at one point with the sparkling version of what I have here in Los Angeles. So we have here, I have a small bottle here. They also have a, a small bottle of the, the still water. And of course, our really nice water glass. I want to mention we're drinking the water at room temperature because we want to actually taste the water, not just taste cold. And it's not the first time I had the water before, so I'm very, very familiar with the water. And it, it's, it's really beautiful because um, exactly as Martin said, 400 is something, when you drink it at room temperature, you notice the water has some weight. It's not... It's clearly not uh, a rainwater or a glacier water where you have this absence make of all the TDS makes it appealing. This one clearly has a weight to it. And it, it also feels very soft. The water feels very soft. And I think what we're seeing here is the alkalinity, the pH level. I think it's above eight or something. And Martin and I were big fans of alkaline water for the taste reason, not for the health reasons, because they have this really nice softness. So I don't have a sparkling here, but I'm curious how this softness and the weight of the water translates into the bubble, or if you feel this acidity, Martin, or if the bubbles are nicely integrated into the water. I'm very curious about that. Okay, so let's see. I have here the Aura Natural Gold Water sparkling, and I will put it into the camera that everybody can see it. First of all, again, like it's a great job been done by the whole look and feel of this bottle. I really look, especially this incredible, beautiful, erotic, sexy woman on the on the main thing. It's it's quite it's it's really nicely done. I have to say that that is really something unique. Um, okay, I'm opening it. It's nuts, but sometimes by the sparkly waters, like the carbonation is going nuts right away. Uh, we know like when a Vichy sometimes we're opening on room temperature, that thing can almost explode sometimes. Um, the same with Roy from Slovenia. 
Um, so that is really there, some reaction, but I just open it and it looks like it's still water still. So that's interesting. So let's see what's happening when I'm pouring it. Now you can see clearly it's a sparkling water. And a lot of people are always saying like, Martin, why are you looking at your glass? It's like, come on, it looks like water. It's quite fascinating actually as a water somebody to look right away into the glass before you even tasting it because I want to see like how the water looks like. Is there anything like maybe particles what you can might be see? Uh, how the bubble formation, sometimes the bubbles are very, very bold right away on the glass. Here it looks like a medium carbonated water, what it looks like from the glass perspective. And it looks like a very, very nice round, good like sparkling water. So this is what I just look at it. Then I'm always taking a nose. So I don't see any odor. So my polishing racks are very, very good because when you have like this very, very intense, sometimes like flat odor, that might be the glass, not the water. So be careful guys, when you're smelling your glass. Oh my God, that's fascinating. So Michael just said this round feeling this alkalinity feeling what we have. And again, Michael said it very, very well. Yes, we love actually alkaline water, Michael and myself, for the reason of a taste profile, because it makes a water this creamy, almost soapy feeling to it. We obviously don't believe in the, in the interesting health claims what some alkaline waters came up with. We are not really into that, but we love from our taste perspective, the thing. The bubbles are super tiny. It's an effervescent water. It's not, the carbonation is clearly not aggressive on your palate. It's super easy to drink. It's the same like effect what I already said when I poured the water, you see like very, very tiny bubbles and exactly the same feeling you have actually in your palate. It's super creamy. It's almost sweet, what is very, very interesting for me, but it's all incredible round, like super, super round. And it's very, very easy to swallow the water. I think it's an incredible good water, especially for food and wine. And now it's interesting because Mike and myself are always saying when it comes to wine, be careful with carbonated waters because the carbonation can be very aggressive on wines, especially on Riesling, Sauvignon Blancs, on tannic rich red wines. I can feel that water actually with the acidic levels of white wines. I think it would be very matching, very interesting. And I'm going to I have two more bottles. I'm gonna do this tonight because right now we have 9.30 in the morning and I have a lot of other things to do today. I cannot pop open uh, my wine cellar, what I have right next to me actually on that side. Um, but I'm gonna do this tonight. Maybe I should do a post later on on Instagram about the connection of our water to this. But it's very, very, very good and I'm very, very excited. Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating and I'll try, maybe I have a sparkling bottle somewhere around, maybe it's behind me on the, on, on the shelf. And I think what we're seeing is that if you get into the medium TDS levels with water and you put even added carbonation on, there's much, much more for the carbonation to hold on to. And that's why you can maintain the, the, the smaller bubbles and the integration is much nicer, but it, it sounds really good. and. Just from the still water alone that we've tried before, I can also see this being a perfect match for red wine. And it's very food friendly water. It sits right in the middle of things. You know, it's not too low, not too high. So this really covers a, a very nice uh, kind of area of food. Um, Amelia, have, have you done any, any pairings with the water? What is some of the Romanian food that you think would pair extremely well with, um, or a water? Oh, in Romania we have a lot of very good food. So, uh, for me, it's perfect with any kind of food, but especially with the red meat, because uh, the, the aura water is very soft and very friendly. And uh, if, you, if you drink it with wine, not together uh, you you for sure you will feel something very special uh, we go to uh, tastings from from red wine so uh, we could uh, drink a kind of wine we could drink after water and another kind of wine and uh, you you feel that uh, the water is cleaning your mouth because it's alkaline of course and it's very friendly 
and you could uh, uh, share the taste of the wine. Ex excellent. But I want to tell you something, a secret. It's very important for the people who are drinking Aura. If you drink it at 12 degrees, it's the best taste ever because Aura water in the winter or in the summer is at the same temperature coming to the mountains, 12 degrees. So if you put this water at 12 degrees, you will drink the perfect Aura. You know, it's, it's very important. Uh, you will see it is different, but it's his biggest potential at 12 degrees. And I want to tell you, if, if it's permitted, I want to tell you something very specially, of course, about the, the label, because it's not so simple. It's not just a label. It, uh, it, uh, it, the label talks about the personality of the water. You know, in Romania, the, the, the word water is feminine word, fe feminine gender. And uh, the silver and the gold are, are metals and are masculine. So we had to put the feminine and masculine symbols in, in, in this label. This is the, the reason that you use the, the very beautiful lady, because uh, you know the, the most important feminine symbol is the, the woman who creates who create life. And the most uh, important uh, masculine element is the sun and the king who, who wear the crown. So this, this is a, 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 so something very special here. Uh, here is the water in, in the atmosphere and here is the, the reach of the ground. So together they are aura. And also in Romania, the word gold is aur. So the silver is argent, argento. So the A and the hour together with, with the drop of the water is aura. Actually, this, this is the explanation of the, of the drawing on the label. I, I don't know if you already knew this. I didn't know. And that is the reason like why we're doing the podcast, because for me, I always want to become the student. That is the idea about a good water sommelier. I always are interested into the history of the water and the history of the bottle design. And Michael says this always very, very well. Uh, Michael always says, not just the water should have terroir, even the bottle and the labels should have terroir. Ma uh, Michael, you want to talk a little bit about this? Because I love the passion what you always have there. Yeah, I think it's really important. And when I saw the, the bottle first, I saw some pictures of the bottle. I, I had the feeling there's something there. I didn't have the explanation. I just saw the bottle. But I had the feeling someone put a lot of thought into that label, into the bottle. And I was curious to discover what it is. And this is what I mean that not only the water should have terroir, but also the bottle, meaning if you just go to a design company and they design you a bottle that has nothing to do with your source, you end up with a brand called Voss. You have the cylinder, it looks very sleek, but there's no connection to the source. And Martin and I, we're both very fond of waters that have this connection to the source. And even Amalia said, you know, oh, if you drink it at 12 degrees, and this is Celsius, then it's perfect because it's exactly at the source. This connection between the bottle and the source is very important. And if you design a brand that reflects that, a brand that is careful to the story of the, of the brand of the water, then I think the bottle helps you make this connection. Again, the beautiful thing is I didn't know everything when I saw the bottle first, but I noticed there's something there and it got me curious and I started exploring. And I think that's a good sign of a brand design if you draw people in with that without saying immediately what it is, you know, on, on the cover. I have a little bit of a mystique and I think that's why I think Aura is really a very successful brand, not only from the, from the quality of the word, but also the way how it's presented 
and communicate it online and on social media. I think they're doing a, a very good job. And Amalia, you're distributing fairly widely, right? You have it in the US, in lots of places in Europe, in France. So you're doing good with the distribution. Yes, uh, we have uh, our uh, in a lot of uh, countries and in a lot of places. Of course, we want to do this more uh, because uh, now we are only on the beginning to say like this. And uh, for sure, I, I think people will, will love Aura because not only the taste, as you already uh, say, because we made it everything with heart. In every bottle, we have a little bit of our heart because uh, the, the owners of the company are doing this um, with a lot of pleasure not only for business, of course, in the end, the business is important, but with a lot of pleasure. And uh, th this is uh, la la like, a, like a toy, you know, like a special, very special toy. No, I think it's incredible. Oh, um, so where can you, because most of our listeners coming from America, is this water been found in retail or just in restaurants? Where can people get their hands on? this incredible good water? I, I think uh, the best way to find uh, this is to, to go on, online on the website. Uh, our uh, distributor from uh, USA, they, they have a, a site and uh, there are a lot of informations. We have not in retail, maybe not yet. Uh, they, they, done a good job there, but uh, Aura is for restaurants and uh, for uh, luxury, luxury industry. And um, I think uh, for, for the people who want something special, not only just the water, but a special water. So they are doing a good job. Uh, I don't know exactly the places because uh, they are doing all the work there, we work only here uh, as a producer. We have in a lot of countries in the world, we have distributors. We don't do this directly. And uh, we are very, very super glad uh, that we work with very uh, nice and very good people. They understood the product from the beginning and they, they are trying to do uh, the very best of our brand. So thank you all. And I hope you will find it in the uh, in US um, in a lot of places. I am I know a lot of good restaurants and good hotels. And uh, maybe um, I don't know in the future after the pandemic because uh, unfortunately we we live in this period of time. Uh, it, it will be in, uh, in a lot of places uh, in the uh, U.S. and not only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I have been contacted the first time by your U.S. distributor, and I was very impressed because he said, I'm just bringing the water in. I have researched the, the web. You know, I've discovered Martin in Los Angeles. I've discovered your website. Can we work together? And for me, that's always the sign that people take the water serious. And you mentioned it before, it's the passion. What Martin and I are seeing with your company, with your water is the passion. That yes, it needs to be a business, you need to make money, we all need it. But it's not just about the money, like we see in much bigger companies where it's all about the spreadsheet, the profit margins and the, the distribution. It's really about the passion and I was very impressed with your distributor here in the US and I think he's working now together with Salacious Drinks out of uh, Washington DC. So we put the link below there, but Salacious Drink would be a good place for you to get our water here in, in, in the US. I think they already have it in their portfolio. And as you said, they're trying to get it into restaurant, but right now it's, it's really, really hard with, with restaurants because they're all closed. So hopefully this is over soon. and. Hopefully, Martin and I at some point will also be able to visit your, your source and maybe do some food pairings and you introduce us to some good food from Romania, from the different regions, and we're going to pair some, some waters with it. That, that would be definitely be a joy for us. For sure, we wait in Romania and uh, especially here in uh, the Banat area, and uh, I could 
uh, tell you uh, the food is wonderful and we have something called sarmale. Everybody loves this kind of food. So please come to Romania for Aura in the first time and after to, to, to eat sarmale. I like that. I can tell you right away because I have to say, and I want to be honest, I've been exposed to so many brands all the time. I slightly forgot a little bit about Aura. I had it here on my display for, for quite a while. I just revisited it and I'm really fascinated about, again, the taste and the creaminess in a sparkling water, what is very, very unusual. You don't have it so many. So for me, I can tell you right away, I will reach out actually to your distributor today because I want to have it on our water menu at Petit Amitage. I think it's such a great water. It fits perfectly Petit Amitage. Michael came to the hotel. I think the look and feel right there is so Petit Amitage already uh, that this is a perfect scenario water, I think, for Petit Amitage and for you. So uh, listeners, at Petit Amitage, you will definitely find our in the next one or two weeks. Hopefully we can get this very, very fast over there. I will update my water menu and our will be part of the, yeah, almost like famous water menu now on the world. Maybe it's even the largest one, I don't know, but it's definitely the most well-known water menu around the world. And our will be part of it. I can tell you this right away. Super, thank you. Definitely. Thank you again to Romania. There was a very, very interesting podcast. It was fascinating for me to revisit your water, to revisit your culture, to revisit your country. And I'm fascinating. And what Michael already said, and thank you for the invite. We are more than happy to come to Romania, hopefully when traveling is safe again. Because again, I had such a great time for several years ago in Romania. What a beautiful country. And I'm always saying it's not just the beauty of the country. Obviously, it is the people who made a country very, very special. And I can see it with you. What a welcoming, smiley face you have that you really want to give the pleasure of this amazing water to others. And that is exactly what we want to see as water sommeliers, because we need to have a great story connected to incredible good water. Michael, in Texas, everything good? Something yeah, else? I will be, everything good. I will be looking in my closet now if I also have a sparkling version of the water, because I don't think I've tried a sparkling version. But I think you described it extremely well. And yeah, it was really good. And it's, it's this passion, right? You know, in, within two minutes, you know, if people are passionate about their product or not. And it's, it's really nice to see that. And we've discovered a new amazing water here and I'm very happy it will be on the water menu at Petit because I think it really works extremely well at Petit. If you tell people there's gold in the water, I mean, who's not going to buy the water at Petit Hermitage, right? So fascinating. Amaya, something you want to say to the end to our listeners here on the podcast? Oh, uh, it was very hard for me to talk. It is the first time and you are celebrities. Uh, in this field, so I am super glad. I hope every, everything was fine and uh, Aura is the best water in the world. <sighs> Our water, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like this, so please don't blame me for this. <laughs> so I wait to in Romania, it was my pleasure. Uh, we have a lot of uh, very nice things to share so you are more than welcome thank you amelia and obviously you just said something michael and myself just almost had a heart attack two things first of all the celebrities and the superstars are the waters i'm just a carrier for this but the the real stars are the waters we can taste and the real stars mother nature who crafted and created this incredible, amazing waters. I'm just the messenger to maybe discover this, and Michael the same, and I'm always very, very happy to have people like you, Amelia, who are so passionate and saying, yes, we think our water is the best water in the world, and actually you should say that, because the same, and you have children, you are proud of your children. So for me, it's kind of like a sign of, you're so connected to this water, 
and you don't think it's just a carrier of, oh, I need to make money, therefore I need to sell some product. No, you really believe in this. And that is a great passion. Therefore, I actually admire this. And this is always what our listeners know. In the end, I'm always saying, you know, stay hydrated, drink water. And we have here incredible good water from Romania. Uh, Aura water with silver and gold dissolved, but obviously with a many, many amazing, great things from Mother Nature. Therefore, stay safe, everybody. And hopefully, you will visit me at Petit Mitage at one point or somewhere else around the world where I am. Cheers.